Hello everyone. Welcome to part 11 of the video series. So today we are going to talk about antigen and antibody, which is an extremely, extremely important topic if you are trying to do research in immunotherapy response prediction or I mean any kind of immune related stuff basically. So immunotherapy is currently a big thing, especially in cancer. So that kind of research involves antigen antibody. So let's try to dive in into the basics of this. So first of all, let's talk about pathogen. So pathogens, I mean, a very fancy name, but it's nothing but foreign infectious microbes causing disease. So you can think of these as pathogens which are causing your disease from outside. Then you have the immune system, which is nothing but your white blood cells. We know that there are different types of blood cells. So white blood cells are the one help us fight the pathogens, which are external bacteria or viruses. And that's the basically immune system. So then we have antigen. Again, when we hear the word antigen, looks really, really fancy, but it's actually very simple. So on the pathogens, you can see some like molecules, which are actually very heterogeneous looking. So these surface molecules of pathogens are called antigens. So your immune system, this guy basically tries to like trace these antigens and try to detect whether this is some pathogen or not. Then we have this figure. Now you may think that Maybe all of the all of the pathogens, all different pathogens may have similar antigens, but that is actually not true. Different types of pathogens can have very different antigens. That is the thing that I'm trying to elaborate right here. So next we have the antibody again. Just like antigen, antibody is a very fancy term. So people when hear about this may think it's a big thing, but it's not. So antibody is something which is, I mean, produced by the white blood cell. It is this kind of Y-shaped protein. I will talk about this in the next slide in detail. So these antibodies are produced in response to these antigens. So the antibody is basically produced to fight against the pathogens, right? That is the thing. Okay, now we are going to talk about how exactly antibodies and these antigens actually interact with each other so that the immune system can fight against the pathogens. So let's talk about that. So first things first, so what is antibody? Antibody is a protein, which is basically an immunoglobulin protein, Ig in short. It looks something like this. Let me explain this a little bit. So you don't need to know about everything here, but I'm just trying to explain the major things, which you will find in different papers. So first of all, you need to know about the variable region and constant region. So this bluish part on the top, you can see this bluish part. So this is the variable region. And the yellow marked part at the bottom, this entire part is the constant region. That is one of the key things. The other key thing is the light chain and the heavy chain. Light chain is basically these small arms. These two small arms are the light chains. The heavy chain is basically these long arm. You can see these two long arms, Y-shaped. So they are called heavy chain. So the antigen binding site, I mean, the part of the antibody that binds to antigen, I will show shortly how it binds. That site is actually situated in the variable region. So let me move further. So there are mainly four different regions. I think you sort of understand that already. Heavy chain constant region, which is this part. Heavy chain variable region, which is this part, this deep blue part. Then light chain constant region, which is this part. And finally light chain variable region, which is this light blue part. So the variable regions are the one which adapt and change so that they can bind to different antigens of different pathogens. Now, there are mainly five main classes. So if you classify these antibodies, there are mainly five classes of antibodies, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, and IgT. And it's very easy to remember them because it's just gamed, right? IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE, and IgT gamed. So IgG is the most abundant one. Now the question is how exactly did they make these five classes? So it's based on the heavy chain, constant region. So the heavy chain constant region, which is this yellow part right here, these actually differ in these five main classes. I mean, the variable region can differ. The light chain can also differ. That's the thing in these five classes. So as I was saying that the variable region that is above on the top keep changing such that they can bind to antigen. So if this is a pathogen, the spikes are the antigens, as you know from the previous slide, and the antibody sort of binds with these antigens. So it's a lock and key type of approach. And as you can see here, different pathogens have different types of antigens. 
and they require different types of antibodies. So this antibody will not actually be able to lock right here. So the immune response will not work unless you have this type of antibody, right? That is the main conclusion. Okay, so two other interesting things. So how does vaccine work? So I think you already can guess what's happening here. So a vaccine is nothing but a harmless form of pathogens antigen into your body. So it's not the pathogen itself. It's a harmless version of it. For example, it can be a protein or a killed or inactivated virus or the mRNA to make the antigen. So it's not the actual virus itself or the actual pathogen itself. I mean, artificially, we inject this type of thing resembling that particular pathogen. What happens is immune system recognizes the antigen and starts making antibodies. And these antibodies will basically work when the real pathogen arrives, like in reality, the harmful ones. That is how vaccines work. So there is another question like, I mean, we normally get flu shot every year, especially in modern countries, but still we get flu. We sometimes get flu in spite of getting these flu shots every year. So why is that? I mean, why doesn't the antibody work? It's because flu virus can develop many different strains. So what is a strain? A strain is nothing but a genetic variant or subtype of a virus within the same species. So it's not a different species, it's just a variant. It can happen because of mutation also. And they can contain different antigens, these variants. So if a strain contains an antigen, which is different from the previous ones, I mean the flu shot, the ones the flu shot was targeting, then we cannot defend against it and then we get the flu. So for the new antigen flus, we need to develop new antibody. So maybe our flu shot targeted these viruses, these strains of the flu virus, but now this new strain appeared and our antibody isn't working now. So that is all about the immune system or antibody antigen lecture. I hope everything is clarified. If you like the video, please make sure to subscribe and you can even donate for the channel and you can buy me a coffee if you really like the video. So thanks everyone. Thanks for watching the video.